going on guys dress guess here today we're going to be learning how to set up an arc survival evolve server this is going to be for the game user settings in today's video we are going to be using a Nitrato server however i am going to be showing you guys how to change it into your windows 10 or on your steam server at the end of the video if you guys want to follow along that way this server you can just copy and paste it into yours and it works the exact same now on an Nitrato server there is going to be one step that we need to do a little bit extra before we're actually able to start customizing the ini on our server so once we get the server fully shut down on all three platforms, make sure if you're on Nitrato, go over to the general settings. Make sure you have expert mode checked. Expert mode checked allows the expert settings tab to open up on the left side of your screen there. Now there's going to be a couple more things that we need to get done in the general area before we start. If you guys want to make sure events are on your server, this is where you check inside. But if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, make sure you have crossplay turned on if you want Windows 10 and Xbox servers to be able to connect to each other. That's basically it for the general settings. Now we're going to head over into the expert settings. I'm going to try to break down and explain each code as we go along in the video. So for example, you want to start with server settings at the very top. Now difficulty offset one is going to be a default value. It's just basically how the game reads the code itself. That's not going to affect your dinosaur levels or anything. Just keep that as the default value and you'll be fine. The next step is going to affect the dinosaur's levels though, just so you guys are aware. So arc is based on a scalar value. So if you have override official difficulty equal and then whatever number you want, for example, 10 is going to be an extra 150 levels on top of an official server. So with 15, your max dinosaur level is 450, but 10 is going to be for 300. So you can sort of play around with those numbers. So every five basically adds half of what an official server would be. I will try to add clip notes on the side here, but just so you guys know, whenever you're doing this on your server, make sure you have all this extra code here erased or else it will mess some stuff up. Next up on the list is allow tech suits in Genesis. This is basically going to be for Genesis map itself. You may as well keep this code in here in case you ever do go back to that map, but it's not actually going to affect any other map besides Genesis. Now, unfortunately, this next code, I was not able to get to working as a code that they just recently added in the latest patch. However, the disable weather fog, I was not able to get to working on silence. Another really useful one to have is enable volcano base. This is going to be for the volcano erupting, mostly on Ragnarok or in case of any other maps have an active volcano, that's how you turn it on. If it's not a map that has a natural active volcano though, you're not able to force it to turn on, unfortunately. All right, so this next code works on all maps, even though their wiki page says it doesn't. Basically, if you have allow multiple tamed unicorns equals true, you're going to be able to tame multiple unicorns on side of your server. Now the player character food drain, that's going to be mostly basic stuff so you guys can play around with that on your own. So we're not going to necessarily mention those. But next up is going to be the B force can ride flyers equals true. So on maps like Aberration, for example, where you're not able to have a flyer at all, if you change the game and I, you're actually able to add in flyers to that map. This code here is so you can fly it on maps that have caves where it normally blocks you from being able to do that. Now the max personal tamed dinos is basically going to be in your tribe. That way you have a max number of tames. If you have this number increased super high, like 5,000 allows everyone to actually run around and tame whatever they want. So inside of our itself you should see your character screen and in the middle there where underneath where it says your tribe name you'll see the max dinosaurs allowed to be tamed I have mine at 5000 and it actually shows that we can tame 5000 dinosaurs if we wanted to this is also where you have your taming speed multiplier that's how fast you tame stuff so i have mine at 60 that way i can tame some of the higher level dinosaurs faster another useful one is only allow specified engrams this is going to be mostly for later on however You'll see more about why we need this automatically learning engrams. If you don't want to automatically learn engrams, then it doesn't matter. You don't need to have that selected. Show map player location equals true is basically going to be so that you can see your player location wherever you are on any map at all. So whenever you open up your map, there'll be like a little, it's either green or blue arrow and it points to where you are all the time. If you don't have a GPS, it's a little bit more helpful to be able to figure out where you're at. A lot of this stuff is just default things that you don't actually need to change. So we're going to skip over some of this stuff. So override structure platform prevention. 
that's going to be so you can add, for example, a turret or plant species X on a Quetzal platform. Or got rid of it for the PvP, that's why if you guys want to be able to fully customize your flyers like you could in the old days, this is exactly how you do that. There's two of this code because sometimes if your server restarts it just adds in a couple for some reason, just so you guys are aware. But it doesn't actually affect any performance and you'll need one of them. Now if you want to have a titanosaur fed on your server for example, make sure you have allow raid dino feeding equals true. This does eventually block their spawns though, so if you tame three titanosaurs on a map like island for example, then no more titanosaurs will spawn at all. So. It does allow them to be fed and kept, however it does kind of block the spawns for everybody else on your server, so sort of a give and take. You guys can decide if you want to actually have them fed or not. Show floating damage text equals true is basically going to be so whenever you're attacking a wild dinosaur, it's going to show numbers like you're attacking a training dummy, that way you can keep track of your melee attacks. I find it useful. I don't mind the text and if it gets too annoying or if you're fighting like a boss and all you see is just like scream spam. You can turn off your HUD and it completely disables all the numbers so you're not actually seeing everything around you. But it is useful if you're trying to, for example, hit a dinosaur from far away with the trank darts to be able to see what you're hitting for and if you actually hit them. Now allow hit markers equals true. This is going to be so there's going to be a cross basically on any dinosaur that you successfully hit. So we got server passwords, I'm going to hide mine, but this is where your server password and your admin password would be. If you're on a computer, however, you need to make sure that you click tab, type in enable cheats, and then input the admin password in order to actually get admin privileges. Make sure you guys don't include the brackets here, but I'm just trying to illustrate this is where the admin password would be. Server password, same exact way, you just have a whatever your server password is without brackets. So allow flyer carry PVE equals true. This is going to be so survivors on ARC is able to be picked up. On a PVE server, you can have it disabled so people aren't actually able to pick you up with the Argentavis or Pterodon, for example. A lot of this other stuff is default, so we're going to keep that regular. Random supply crate points is basically going to be so the supply crates aren't going to be showing up in the spots that they're supposed to be on the map. You can have it so it's completely randomized. However, if you have it so it's supposed to be, you're at least able to somewhat have an idea of where to go. So I typically have this as false. You can't turn it on though if you want. So all of these prevent commands, we're just going to sort of give a general census of it. So prevent download survivors basically means you're not able to download a character from a different server into this one. You can upload your character, however. So if you have a dinosaur that you want to keep or an item that you want to keep from any server, you can always go to an obelisk and upload it. It's just the problem is you can't always download it onto that server. I did forget to go over this command though, but make sure you guys have allow cave buildings PVE equals true. If you guys want to place a foundation and a bed down inside of a cave to get artifacts a little bit easier. But it does go inside of this next command here, so these two sort of work together. So we also want to force allow cave flyers equals true. This is going to allow Tanner. This is going to allow Pteranodons, for example, to be able to fly into caves. That way you can just sort of fly over all the dangers and get directly to the artifact. So you can have it so diseases are permanently removed from your server just completely. However, I do find it's kind of fun to have non-permanent diseases since they're not going to affect you that long. So I typically have prevent diseases as false and then non-permanent diseases true. Non-permanent diseases are ones where you can die and it goes away. Or for example, it's on a timer and once the timer ends, you're back to normal. That's going to be for like the coughs that bats get you inside of games and things like that. Next up is always allow structure pickup equals true. Basically, this is going to have it so if you want to pick up anything you place down, you're just able to do it without having to destroy it. However, the way we're going to have this set up is so it has no timer at all. So if you want to have it something so you don't accidentally pick it up, make sure you damage it just slightly. It's going to force you to repair it before you're able to pick it up. So that's just a nice little tip on how to get that working good. Structure pickup duration is basically going to be how long you hold the button before you're able to pick it up. I have it on shoot sort timer 0.1. That way it basically picks it up immediately. Or you can have it set for like 10 seconds like the official. That way it just takes a very long out time before you're able to pick it up. 
allow integrated S plus structures equals true. Basically, this is going to be to allow your foundations and things like that to take on the S plus appearance. Also allows stairs and things of that nature. This is just the official S plus integration that wildcard really item stack size multiplier equal whatever number you want. I have mine at 10,000. So for example, this is going to be for mostly your typical resources. So like thatch, wood, berries, all that stuff can stack to 10,000. This is not going to work for prime meat and things like that. That will be covered in a later video tomorrow to show you guys how to do that stuff. But this is going to be for like your main general purpose resources. This also helps tremendously with server performance. That way, instead of having your meat stack in 20s, you can get 10,000. That way it all goes into one slot and you don't have to sit here and fiddle around with that. And it helps with storage as well. These next couple commands are mostly for the Steam, but make sure you have prevent backwards walking equal false if you do have any mods. That way your, for example, snow owls can still walk backwards. Argent speed multiplier, that's not actually relevant anymore since they added in the flyer speed enable option which we will go over here in a second so you want to make sure you have enable flyer speed level up equals true this is going to be so any flyer on your server is able to get a speed increase from pterodons all the way up to wyverns and quetzals now there's another code here as you guys see the structure pickup time after placement if you don't have it so you can always pick it up you can customize how long before you no longer pick it up allow multiple c4 and allow flying stamina recovery these guys are both basic stuff basically if you want to have it so you can turn it on bomb have your c4 as true option or if you want to have your quetzals to be like it was originally how wildcard intended do allow flying stamina recovery equals true this is going to be so whenever you get off of your quetzal the stamina is going to start going back up while you're standing on the platform itself this is more to clean up a server so basically if you have destroy unconnected water pipes equals true That'd be so any water pipes that are there after a certain decay period are just automatically going to destroy themselves so you don't have pipes all over the place. If you have it false, it's not going to actually destroy it for you, but it just sort of helps with server performance and things like that. Now, enable cryo pod nerf false. Basically, this is going to be to disable the cryo sickness. So as long as you have it false, you can pick up and throw down a dinosaur as much as you want and it's not actually going to have any negative effect on you or your teams. The rest of this is just going to be basic server-side settings for like your audio and things like that. So you don't necessarily need to change any of these. We're done with the customization inside of our game user settings if you're on Entrato. I am going to show you guys where to do this on Windows 10 though. Now keep in mind that there is going to be two commands that are going to be a little iffy. So the weather fog, I tried to get it to work on Lost Island and I just was not able to get the code to work. Maybe it works on another map. You guys will have to let me know in the comments down below. So you want to look for a folder called Studio Wild 455848. Folder here, you want to go into your local states folder, go into your saved, UWP config, UWP. And then this is where you can find your game and game user settings. All you do is double click on it and this is where you input the code that we created from Nitrato. All right, so now that we got all that done, we are going to show you guys how to do it on the Steam version as well. So we'll go and boot up Steam. While we're doing this though, make sure you click save changes. That way everything we did actually does work. And you should see in the bottom right corner, this little message from Nitrato popping up saying server config started successfully. And you want to make sure you get out of expert settings at all costs before you start your server or else it's going to reroll basically. So as long as you're not in your expert settings, you're 100% safe to start your server. With your new changes, everything should work relatively simple. If you do have an issue though, let me know and I'll try to help you fix your code. Now on Steam, it's going to be relatively simple. All you have to do is right click on any game you own and you can go into browse local files. This is going to pop it up directly. I'm using seven days to die as an example since I didn't have Arc installed, but this is where you would go to the UWP as well. If this guide helped, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Let me know if you guys want to see a customization on the game.